testosterone's neurocognitive effects. It's absolutely outstanding. I did a lot of research for this one, guys. In addition to my anecdotal historical information with taking care of thousands of men, here we go. So many men come to me with a complaint of declining neurocognitive symptoms. These symptoms are one of three types. A general sense of inability to concentrate, which is called brain fog, and specific and nonspecific issues and complaints with memory and focus. Next is low energy in this generalized malaise and fatigue. And in addition, something we call poor mood. This is without and with real depression. So with or without a diagnosis of actual mood disorder. Also in this mood aspect, you have this overall declination and declining sense of well-being and maybe confidence. And doctor, I'm, that's not on the ball. I don't have that pep to go to work and I don't sell things the way I used to. Apart from the sexual experience, complaints that men have always come to me with, which is twofold, issues with libido and the desire for sex, and then there are the physical sexual function spectrum of issues from erectile dysfunction, weak erections, no erections, inability to orgasm, all the way through to premature ejaculation. So that covers why men come to me in aspects of neurocognitive issues. Now, the pathophysiology or the physiology on the brain, testosterone endogenously from your own testicles and exogenously from an outside source, in addition to DHT, dihydrotestosterone via 5 alpha rocdectase testosterone to DHT, and then of course estrogens and estradiol via aromatase, this enzyme. So that's the milieu we're talking about here. The effects on the central nervous system. You have the top brain, the thinking cerebral brain, and then you have the limbic animal brain. So let's go into the limbic system. This is the old animal brain. There's no question there's a lot going on here with testosterone and other androgens. There's an amygdala, there's a hippocampus, thalamus, hypothalamus, basal ganglia, and the cingulate gyrus. I think no neuroanatomist or no psychologist, no neurocognitive behavioral expert is gonna disagree that this is the limbic brain. This is the CPU, if you will, of what runs us underlying. These are gonna be feelings of well-being, focus, concentration and confidence. Energy, sexuality resides here, anger and pleasure. And then of course you have the augmentation intellectual function of the top thinking brain. There's no question that there's going to be a relationship here and of androgens. Testosterone's effects on these structures are very complicated and well known in addition to other neurotransmitters that are well characterized. Dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine and GABA, not to mention many others. These lead to what I call the testosterone experience. Now, where is the evidence for this, that testosterone affects mood, energy, sexuality? I have it right here. Let's talk about mood first. In evidence-based terms with androgens, I have two articles to present. The first article is JAMA, Journal of American Medical Association Psychiatry. This is big, 2019, Association of Testosterone Treatment with Alleviation of Depressive Symptoms in Men. 
here's the basic findings on this. This systemic review of meta-analysis of 27 randomized placebo-controlled clinical trials involving a total of 1,890 men found that testosterone treatment was associated with significant reduction in depressive symptoms, particularly in participants who received higher dose regimens. Wow, that is incredible. So I'll talk about this in the end. Next, on the mood. Continue with the mood. We have the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. This is all the way back in 2003, but it's an outstanding article in my opinion. Now, when you look at this article, they state the majority of hypogonadal men on testosterone replacement therapy report substantial improvements in mental and in overall well-being. And they specify four articles to support that. This is evidence-based. Now, guys, this is when you're working with a real doctor, a good doctor that doesn't know the level of detail for evidence-based support. You could use this video. Doctor, here's the support. If the doctor says there's no support for it, we have evidence right here. Now, it talks about the brain is recognized as a steroidogenic organ and the basis, the ability to produce and metabolize steroid hormones. Testosterone present in the brain, as in other organs, can be either reduced to a more potent antigen, DHT, by 5-alpha reductase, and also to estradiol. They talk about this, and they talk about that more evidence needs to be supported, and of course, more trials, but we, we always say that. That's something we always say. Now, the next article, straight up evidence-based relationship to antigens in this central nervous system, this neurocognitive, is on sex. This right here is the Journal of Andrology, 2016, Increased sexual desire with exogenous testosterone administration in men with obstructive sleep apnea, a randomized placebo-controlled study. Now, I picked this one because I thought there's so much data out there. This was cool because it showed that across the spectrum, looking at men that had different lower levels endogenously, these were men that had low T and they're overweight, they had sleep apnea, which you have to be careful with because of the red blood cells when you treat men with sleep apnea with testosterone. Regardless, this showed across the board that I believe it was 90 in the high 90th percentile, and they have great statistics on this, men responded sexually, but they didn't respond to other new neurocognitive measured characteristics. So this is where the data is. Now, let's move beyond the mood and the sex. I just proved it. Testosterone improves mood, but you have to be careful. I'm going to review this in the end. And the sexual experience. However, neurocognitive relief with testosterone on those two other variables, concentration, brain fog, memory focus, and low energy malaise and fatigue, there's inconsistent data for this. When you go to a real doctor and a real expert, he's going to want to know, where's the evidence? Well, we have the evidence for the mood, however, be careful. And for the sex, I also say be careful with that too. But do we have evidence for the energy, the brain fog, relief, and this, this nonspecific, I call, neurocognitive effect? We don't have direct effects. Why? In my experience, it's very complicated and multifactorial. But let's talk about it from my experience with thousands of men. Most men, again, increase in sex. Almost 99% of men, even with normal testosterone, say in the 400s, with or without steroid history, he gets more sexual. And again, it's not 100%. Nothing's 100%. But I see it very close to 99 or 97% that some aspect of the sexual function goes up. Now, if it doesn't go up, that's when I have tried everything. Balance the hormones, the estrogen, with or without aromatase inhibitors, you name it, the ABCDs, I do everything. I'm honest to a man after time, maybe up to a year it may take with the sexual experience, with trying to 
click off every other aspect from mood disorders to, to other psychosocial issues and stress and of course comorbid medical issues. There is something I say in this man's brain, I say I'm sorry with different doses of testosterone. It doesn't affect every single man's sex, but most it definitely does. But then again, is it worth it? Number one. Number two, most men have an increased sense of well-being and mood, and that's it. And we've proved it again. There's the data. However, however, <clears throat> there has to be vigilance on general anxiety and anxiety. You men have showed this to me. My patients out there, you guys have shown this to me in the real world, in the streets for 20 years and thousands of men, but one-on-one -on -one with me working with you guys, and I still do. It's, it's my day and I will never ever stop doing this. The attention has to be to the underlying mood disorder. You give it testosterone, some aspects of concentration and wellness can increase. You may be motivated. Obviously, the muscles are going to get bigger. The gym is never going to get worse, but is it as good as you want? Be careful. But with attention to the moodiness and the anxiety, of course, with the dose of testosterone, the estradiol, you know I talk about the aromatase inhibitors all the time and the other PEDs. It's very complicated. Next, in addition to this, with the well-being, not to mention the sex, the utilization of DHT blockers, finasteride and dutasteride for the hair, and I've recently seen it used with testosterone and other drugs for BPH from good urologists. This is so complicated. In the end of the day, you have the chin down, heart, kidney, gut, prostate, balls, testicles. And then you have the chin up, and that's what today is about. In addition, let's keep going. The concentration, the brain fog, I see improvement, but it's very subjective. However, it's a multifactorial scenario. Other medical conditions have to be considered. ADD, if a guy is ADD, which what bright man doesn't have ADD or some OCD, it's very subjective. You can't grab this thing and nail it. You can't touch it like this, like this. You can't touch it like this, like that. It's subjective. You have to be so careful. You have to work on other issues when it comes to this very, very tricky aspect of the neurocognitive experience. You have to work on the ABCs. A1C, blood pressure, cholesterol, cardiac, D, deposition disease, the red blood cells in the heart. It's all on my videos. I give it to you guys. Stress, and I call it motivation status for this brain fog and for this concentration. Motivational status. If it motivates a man and he feels sexually better, that can get a lot of guys up out of bed in the morning. Let's get comments, guys. Come on. Let's get, this is where the best part comes. Get the comments. And then the low energy and the malaise and fatigue. Again, there's inconsistent data for this as well. However, in my opinion, just like the concentration and the brain fog, it's multifactorial. I do see men get improvement, but is it, what is it from? Is it because your red blood cells go up and you get a little more oxygen carrying capacity? However, watch out because that's D deposition disease and the androgen induced erythrocytosis and the possible possibility for polycythemia and disease for DVTs and heart disease, not to mention strokes and hypercoagulable states across the board, you have to be careful. But that's the energy. So the concentration, the brain fog, the energy, this is so subjective, but it can happen. But there's no question, the mood and the sex for most men is going to be affected. But when the mood comes down to it, guys, you have to be careful not to stimulate aggression, moodiness, and anxiety. And can it be sustained? Can this whole thing be sustained? In summary, in summary, testosterone absolutely has wide-ranging neurocognitive effects. It's so complicated. It's so multifactorial. It's so man per man, and that's why I'm here for you. The question you have to ask yourself when it comes to this is, do you need testosterone? Do you need it? Is it worth it for the side effects? Not to mention 
Could it help depression, but lead to anxiety? And you have to understand, gentlemen, it's going to be forever, absolutely forever. No one's going to think they're going to go on testosterone for a week or for a month or a year. And if you do, what's the aftermath? Do you lower yourself and then are you going to suffer? Is it worth it? Do you understand you're going to be on? I've been on this drug for, it's coming up cumulatively of over 30 years. This is why this is my day job and I've poured my everything I have out for you guys to understand don't take testosterone or any steroids if you have if you're young enough and everything's working and you're fine and if you do if you do you have to understand time is always ticking time is your friend it gives you time and it's also going to be potentially your enemy for all of us let's get comments guys thank you so much for following me through this very potentially complex interaction and discussion of the neurocognitive effects of testosterone. Thank you.